uh, you have two sons. That's right. Uh, and they were huge fans of the first Quiet Place film. Yeah, so we uh, we went to see it in the cinema, I suppose it's two years ago. The first yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah, the three of us, just the three of us. And um, I didn't really know that much about the movie. I knew it was good, but I said, come on, guys, we'll go. And uh, so we watched it. And, you know, they ha I think they had these hoodies. So by the end of it, they were just sat with the hoodies <laughs> like, like this, <laughs> wa watching it. And... Um, it, you know, it's a magnificent achievement, the first movie. And for me, the thing I loved so much about it was the, um, the emotion. Sure. It just hit me emotionally, you know? I wonder, as a dad, I think it will hit me emotionally, like, when I'm with uh, my kids at a film that is affecting them that way. Like, being scared. I remember as a kid being such an exciting thing in the, in the cinema. Like, yeah. it must have been so fun to be with your kids and, and watching how movies affect that. Yes, it was. And because... Essentially, it's a, it's a film about family, as is the sequel, you know? And it's a film that, that insists on being watched in, in a cinema yeah. with others, because it's a collective experience. You feel that anxiety and that jeopardy and that tension with everybody else in the cinema, which is kind of, you know, what it was, that's what it was made for, cinema. Are they then very excited that their dad is in the sequel? Well, how will I put this? Like, I'm not cool. <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm not uncool. So I'm you just like, found that soft middle of dadhood. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, no. Because you know, it doesn't trick. Uh, you're. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your films. There's not a lot of kid-friendly work. Like it must no. be nice for them to finally have something they no. can see you in. No, it's like it's only now that some stuff is not highly inappropriate. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I've never heard someone say, oh, you have kids, you got to watch Peaky Blinders. You got to. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That, uh, that must be a weird show to be a part of, because this, this started as a very small production, yes. uh, Peaky Blinders. This was yeah. not one of those Game of Thrones type shows that was aiming for the stars. It just sort of built a very uh, large uh, international following. Yeah. It, has it been a trip to be a part of something like that? Oh, for sure. You know, it started as a little show on, on BBC Two in the UK. And um, then very, because it had no advertising budget, and the BBC don't generally ad advertise. So it, it, it just, it was word of mouth, you know? Just word of mouth, and gradually, we've been doing it now. We've been shooting it for eight years or something, and we're about to start series six. So. Yeah, it's crazy how many people across the world and how obsessive the fan and loyal the fans are. It's and it's a... Uh... Loyal. <laughs> loyal, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I hope, um, I hope uh, this comment will not uh, run afoul of your fan base, but the show had to be very good for people to get over how bad a title Peaky Blinders is. <laughs> you thought this as well. I, I mean, I was confused. Yeah, yeah it's a qu very confusing... Peaky Blinders seems like the name of a cartoon horse. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen the show, it's not that. No. There's some horses in it. But... Yeah, there are some horses. Yeah, but... Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, one of the many great things about Peaky Blinders is the haircuts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that you obviously have to then have that haircut. Like, that's not... Yeah, uh, that's coming in about 10 days now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no wonder your kids are, like, have issues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just saying, they, they can't think you're that cool when you're, like, oh. the, the one dad walking around with your sides. Uh. Well, yeah, th yeah, that's why they wear hoodies, and I wear hoodies. <laughs> they try to get you to wear a hoodie? Yeah. I, um... You know, the mad thing about that haircut as well, it was designed, I think, as a sort of a protection against lice and uh, infestation. And now all the hipsters are wearing it. Yeah. Does that mean lice is making a comeback? <laughs> it might be. It would be the least of our problems right now. Well, that's true. Uh, you, uh, you were in the Christopher Nolan uh, Dark Knight films, uh, playing the Scarecrow. You, I did not realize, you auditioned to play Batman. Well, yes, uh, um, um, amongst many other actors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was it, uh, did you have a sense, I mean, obviously, uh, Christopher Nolan still was a fan of yours, still doing <coughs> the films. Did you at any point think, like, oh, I'm a perfect fit for this? Or did you, when you were in the Batman suit, did you think, what were, you, what were your thoughts? Because I imagine that's intimidating. No, I never for a moment <laughs> thought I was, you know, material. I think I was, there was, it was, it was obvious that Christian Bale was going to be Batman. That, at that time, it was clear, and he's such a magnificent Batman and Bruce Wayne. But I did get to, to I think it was the Val Kilmer suit I <laughs> yeah. tried on which they had to adjust <laughs> uh, <laughs> slightly. Um, but it's a weird thing. You, you, you put it on, you put the cowl on, and uh, 
your voice, you just, the voice drops, no? it yeah, drops sure. a couple of octaves, so that's it. You can't do the Batman voice without doing the Batman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, the... that's why I couldn't do it, because I'd be like, I'm Batman. They'd be like, no, you're not. Get out of here. You're just a guy in a suit. Yeah. Hey, uh, congrats on the film. Congrats on Peaky Blinders. Uh, that's so exciting that we have another season coming. Thanks so much for being here. That's Killian Murphy, everybody.